We're at Vincent Corporation in Tampa, Florida. It's the 27th of January, 2017. And we're in the, uh, these are ready to ship, screw presses, uh, getting ready to ship, and then a bunch that have been in the rental fleet that have been around. Uh, this stuff, we're gonna test outdoors. We have uh, five pails of sample. Uh, the sample has hair in it this time. I can, that looks like there's hair in it. And um, you can squeeze it. And um, we're gonna run it in this press here. It was the handiest thing we had. I haven't bothered doing anything to it. We're running it at 45 hertz. So the screw's turning a little bit slow. And uh, in the hopper, there's a screw turning around. The screen that happened to be on the press has unusually large holes. Uh, those are, I think, 8-inch holes. That's uh, larger than, we only use that once or twice a year. It happened to be in the press when I found it. Uh, we've got an air cylinder here hooked up to uh, push the discharge door closed. I had them hook up the rotating cone. You can see how this cone is rotating because there's those pins that go around and they're caught in this uh, clamp right here and the wheels are pushing the cone shut. Um, air pressure, we've got it set at 20 PSI, that's low, we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll find out if this works and if it does, we'll run a time trial. There we go. You get it on you already? I left the big holes in the screen, or the screen with the big holes. And, um, um, not a whole lot of solids in here. I, that's five gallons that's gone in. We're, it'll come out wet at the beginning because we've just conveyed along some wet material, but hopefully we've got enough to form a plug and get this cone to start opening. I'll add the air pressure set low. Uh, thicker sludge coming through here. Inlet hopper. Yeah, we're um, feeding down nicely. That hasn't been blind over anything. I, I see a wad stuck in the hole at the B plate. Uh, we'll have to do something about that. There's a stripper bar there. I won't put my finger on it, but it's not functioning. Uh, but um, that affects the throughput capacity of the press. And um, this is what we got here. Okay, I'm going to try to ease open this discharge cone, see what we have here. And if I pull it open. Okay. So that's what we've separated. Close it back up before I lose it. I'll keep it at 20 PSI. Yeah, I'm rounding up some other people, but we're using our uh, big vertical boring mill, our horizontal boring mill. Okay, here goes our second pail. And we're just going to try and get a feel for how many seconds it takes to, for a five gallon pail to go through here. Um, Okay, uh, give it a few more seconds and that's how long it takes. Okay, that uh, looks like we're running 10 gallons per minute through here. That is, it took about 30 seconds for uh, a five gallon pail to go in. Well, we're trying another one. Okay, we've filled up all the way to the top of the screen. The press is getting full. And, um, sand clear. Okay, here's the press liquor. Um, I don't see any hair in there. Um, no unusually large particles. And this may be what the customer wants. Okay, we confirmed uh, uh, 10 gallons per minute in this model uh, KP6 press running uh, 
a little bit on the slow speed uh, with an extra large opening in the screen. Uh, the press liquor is, we're getting some filtration here, a coarse filtration I would call it. Those openings are awfully big. We can go a lot smaller in the openings. I don't think it'll change anything. Okay, there goes our last bucket. Yuck. We're going to screen action here. Yeah, I can see where some of the hair uh, was slung over the top. We've stopped the press. Go ahead and open the cone. And uh, now you'll have to pull it open with your hands. Okay, it's not pouring out. That's why I stopped the press. And what we've, yeah, let's see what we uh, press cake we would have been making. They grab it all in the car. Yeah, here, let's get dig it out with this. And that's what we were separating with the press. And that would have uh, come out as a, a, a mass, a lot like what you see right there. That's about as dewatered as we'd probably get it, maybe a little better. But, um, so this is what we did. I think this would feed through the press without a problem. Oh, put it back, just a minute, uh, stop. What we'll do is put it back in there and chase it out and see what it, how it chases out with some other material. Okay, we're feeding in uh, cotton seed hulls. And see if we can get enough of them in here. Sometimes cotton seed hulls, when they're dry, will lock up and jam a press. I don't think this one has enough compression to do that. Okay, we're getting a little action here. I'm gonna need some more. Oh, yeah, oh they're still they're piled up there. Yeah, I think it's that uh, flapping. We're running it backwards now to see if we've got something in there we can unplug. Okay, we're starting to get, this is what it would look like uh, when we got the press operating correctly. The first stuff here is wet because it hadn't been pressed. Here's more typical press cake that's been squeezed out. And um, that's what I would expect the press to do. Maybe not that, that the flow of uh, press cake wouldn't be that heavy, but uh, anyway, the cottonseed hulls are pushing the material out. We open the cone. The stripper pins, uh, get my finger in the view here. Oh, there we go. That right there. Oh, wait, there's a stripper pin right there. Um, probably helps in this application. Probably not necessary. We're feeding in uh, styrofoam at this point. We always use styrofoam to clean out the press. Probably would have worked better in the alfalfa. Yeah, I'm looking at alfalfa that we're, uh, not, not working alfalfa, cottonseed holes that are being pressed right through the screen. And of course, we're still pressing out uh, press cake. There's some dry stuff. And now I see cottonseed holes still mixed in. 